there, Ollie. Hi, Mandy. Hi there. Um, Fulham have drawn with Liverpool and Tottenham. They've only had one defeat in their last seven games. Are, are they a better side than their league position suggests, do you think? I think they've had a, a very good turnaround from uh, from a slow start. I think they've made some very good signings towards the end of the window. And you can see after that, uh, that they're very well coached. Uh, Scott and the, the, the team, they've... they've, they've they trust their own uh, organisation, team shape, and it's one of the hardest teams to break down. Um, it's hard enough to go to Craven Cottage anyway, but at the moment they're really um, uh, st well structured on and off the ball, and they've got some uh, some players defensively very quick and strong, uh, good on the ball, but also individually going forward they've got players who can make a difference. So it's uh, it's another tough game in the Premier League. I'm going to take you back two years. Uh, you were asked in a press conference a couple of years ago where you see the, the team in two years' time, and you said challenging for every trophy there is. If you're going to do that in the Premier League, Oli, do you, or is one area that you can improve by beating the top six teams, is, is that the biggest thing that you have to change in order to do that and be considered genuine title challengers? Well, of course, we've had some tight games against the teams around us uh, this season. It's going, it's going to be tight anyway, uh, and I think only... Only Tottenham uh, or the teams around us have beaten us. We've not conceded many goals. We've not, con of course, we've not conceded Chelsea, City, Liverpool, uh, which is also uh, a strength to have. We've built some defensive momentum, and uh, if you keep on winning uh, the games that uh, we have done lately, uh, I think we've got a good chance of still uh, staying competitive towards the end. Um, Oli, how would you regard Bruno's form at the moment? He's obviously played so well for so long, but I didn't know if he was feeling a little bit tired now. Ah, his form is very good. He was just uh, just voted uh, Player of the Month. He's uh, not tired. No, no chance. He'll he'll. Um... He is one of the players who runs and covers the ground in every single game. Very good at recovering, very good at uh, recharging his batteries. And uh, if he'd scored on his free kick, if he'd uh, just uh, had a little bit of, uh, of air on the ball when, uh, when Luke put a cross in, he would have been uh, lauded as the, uh, the best player in the Premier League again. He's, since he came in, he's been absolutely immense. And um, no, he's not tired. If, if, if I ask him, there's absolutely no chance he'll say he's tired. Is it, is it that he's done so well for so long that everybody expects him to do it all the time? Yeah, well, you know, he's expected to create goals, score goals, and sometimes the, uh, the margins are against him. That free kick, I saw that one in. Uh, there's a couple of passes that he plays through and it's just marginal if he's on or off. And uh, so he's always on the verge of creating something, where, even when he loses the ball. And that's the position uh, I want him in. And that's what he's been told to do. Like, he has to be the, um, the creative one. He, I want him to play the passes he sees. Afternoon, Ollie. Um, I am. Are, there, are, there, are there any absentees for, for tomorrow's match? And we've seen you rotate quite well during this frantic period and there's no let up so can we expect the same tomorrow well we've not got the test results from the covid yet and that's uh, more than it's almost 30 hours ago since we did the testing so hopefully we'll get them soon but uh, no everyone trained this morning uh, more or less brandon and phil jones didn't train and the rest uh, were on the pitch just wondering about outgoings, you mentioned the other day in your interview with the club that, that you couldn't say no to potentially more going out and there's lots of speculation about Jesse Lingard seemingly by the day. So him in particular, will he be here at the end of the month? Well, I, I don't want to go into individuals, but uh, we can probably allow maybe one or two more to go out. But then it's one of the strengths we have is that we have had a, a fit and a deep squad strength in depth. So. We don't want to give uh, give our uh, advantage away by uh, by easing off on our uh, on our players. So um, I can't really give you a better answer than that. In Cooper, 
Hi, Ollie. Um, one of the players you have brought in, although it was late because it was summer, then he came in the last few days, is Amar Diallo. Uh, what's, what's your first impressions of him been? Very good. He can handle the ball. He, uh, he's enjoyed training. He makes a difference in training, which is quite um, uh, remarkable uh, at his age. So, yeah, some adjustment and uh, set to settle into the the hustle and bustle or the physical part of the Premier League, but uh, uh, I can't see it be too long until he's in the squad. In, in terms of that, sort of a timescale, sort of, what, four or five weeks, that sort of thing, or is it, could it be quicker than that? To, to, to well, it, it, it might be quicker than that, who knows? He's definitely settled down well, the players have taken to him, and uh, he's and he's a very good character, uh, very polite, smiley boy who works really hard and he's, he's doing his uh, sessions, uh, getting used to us, of course, it's always a, always a period of adjustment needed, but he's settled in well. James Ollie, you spoke about defensive momentum at the moment. Where do you feel like the team are from an attacking point of view? Because it's just two goals from the last four games in all competitions. Do you feel like the front three are just a tiny bit off where they need to be at the moment? <laughs> uh, I think we're, this season we've scored more in goals, more goals, we've created more chances than before. I think it's only a matter of uh, time before those you know, margins that we felt were against us against Liverpool will tip our way again. We've got players there who can do individual bits, but the, the team is gelling better, relationships are working better. And uh, no, I've, uh, of course, the foundation will always be the the, the hard work and the shape. And uh, but at Man United, we are expected to create chances uh, from everywhere, and uh, we have players to do that. Andy Mitten. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Are you enjoying this job? And if so, which part do you most enjoy, and which part do you least enjoy? <laughs> um, yeah, of course I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't do it if I if I didn't, uh, and if I didn't feel up to it, and I didn't feel that, uh, I was uh, giving something uh, back to the club. Um, and I can't say there's uh, there's a lot that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy I don't enjoy leaving players out. I, I think it's hard from for big games. You know, you've got players who deserve to play. It's a difficult uh, job to call it, tell them they're not in a job on a Sunday afternoon, but then Monday morning again, they're back in a job. So that's uh, the chat before that, to explain why they don't play. Um, and that's never an easy one when I don't really have a good uh, reason behind it because I can give them so many reasons for them to be playing. And the, the but that's part of, what I love with the job as well, uh, working with human beings, because uh, that's the main job, to get the best of individuals so we can be a strong team together. Last question in this section for Per Carlson. Yes, hello, Ola. Hi. Uh, so I'm going a bit off topic here, but uh, your former teammate Phil Neville has left the England national team to, to coach in, in the US and, and now uh, the former player of uh, of the Norwegian national team, Hege Riese, is, is one of the favourites to to take over the job as an interim manager. Um, so the question is really, Ole, have you started a sort of trend here in England with, with Norwegians being on top of the food chain of English football? And, and how do you think Hege will, will suit a job like that? Uh, that's it's speculation again, but of course, uh, I know Haig uh, has done really well with Lillestrøm and she's had a fantastic career both as a coach and a, and a player. So uh, if that's the case, if England decide that, I think they've got a, a very good, um, good coach there and a good, very good human being.